Hi, welcome to the first episode of Enter the Paracosm, a new series I'm starting that will establish the world building and setting that makes up my stories. I really hope you enjoyed the first episode and leave a comment down below to tell me what you think. All right, let's enter the paracosm. In the beginning, there was nothing. The universe was devoid of life and matter, a fresh canvas awaiting its paint. Ikon broke through into the universe. Her body, a mass of darkness, studded with kind eyes and gentle hands that emerged from her billowing form. This was her world to create. Ikon was followed by a man named Bird. He was tall with dark skin and dark hair. His eyes are fiery gold, and wings, the colour of coral, extended from his back. Bird was to be her messenger in this new world, and he was eager to prove himself to Ikon, the new god. They were not alone in this. Ikon had assistants that would spread far and wide to build this universe. She had Hald, the hand of God, creating elements within its palm to be used by the others. She had Almorange, the former of worlds, its arms reaching far from each of its corners to place stardust in its desired patterns. Almorange also created magic, which would be later given to a select few species. Promenade, the explorer, created and brought into this world to watch over the universe and to keep it from straying from the laws of physics. Challenge, the argumentative, providing contrast and disagreements that will help Ikon refine her vision for the universe. Unknown, a wreath of wings seemingly suspended from a long, flesh-like rope that reached eternally into the sky. They were seen as a judge, observing the works of Ikon. And finally, Seed, a small pearl with an earthen tree wrapping its roots around it, and within it, it held the code of life. And so they created the universe together. But eventually, Ikon grew bored of the lifeless rocks scattered around her domain. The stars that now dotted the sky were beautiful, but cold. And so she held seed in her many hands and asked Bird what life she should make first. Perhaps, she said, I could create a form of protobacteria to evolve into something new. Or maybe, she considered, I could create trees with black wood and red leaves reaching up into a dark sky. And while she tossed these ideas out, Bird watched her. His hands were clasped in his lap. His joy worked to speak, but no sound came out. He stared helplessly at Ikon as she giggled at her own ideas. There was one thing he wanted more than anything in this universe, more than anything in the universe before them. He wanted to create a child with her, another god. Ikon's gaze drifted to Bird, who had been silent for many hours. Her eyes were soft, the dark voids within them swirling. Bird, she asked, may I know your thoughts on all of this? Bird approached her and took one of her many hands in his. Ikon's form eclipsed his by many, many degrees, her eyes large discs threatening to swallow him up. And in that moment, he broke. He told her everything, of being in love with her since the moment they began here, that he wanted to create a new god to be their child, to love the universe, and from there create life to populate it. Ikon listened in silence, and her form rippling, and Bird stood frozen in fear, before she grasped him, pulling him close against her form. She felt soft and fuzzy, and a little tingly against his skin. He couldn't help but laugh and felt pure love radiate from her through him. A yes, he supposed. They created their first child. He was very small and round, with golden hair to match Bird's golden eyes. He became known as Hope, the eldest of the children. 
The assistants found joy in Hope's curiosity. He would drift to and from, asking questions and learning. Eventually, he would not be alone. Ikon and Bird created four daughters. Mascot, the god of life. Dead and dying, the gods of death. Mayhem, the god of chaos. And Craft, the god of order. From there, they began to create new life. Protobacteria, mammals, insects, trees, reptiles, and all manner of creatures to walk the numerous planets of the universe. Mascot oversaw the birth of new pups, and dead and dying ushered the elderly beasts into a quiet, eternal rest, their spirits leaving their bodies to wander the expanse of Iconica, a land created to be the afterlife. But there was an issue. Generations passed, and all creatures evolved and changed, but they did not choose. Their transformations were left up to random chance. Their biology shifted to make it easier to swim or to sing, but they had no drive to be more than what they were in that life. Ikon grew worried. Life wasn't progressing as it had in the universe she came from. No, they were missing something. Meanwhile, Mascot had an idea, and created for herself a child, Egg. Egg was round, shimmering like the pearl that was seed, and Mascot tucked it into her nest in a nursery she created. Ikon watched her daughter tend to this developing child with much curiosity and love. And like lightning, she understood. She understood what was missing. The drive to want. The need to progress. The desire to change and not to see it as inevitable. The beings of the universe needed to dream and she needed to give them that ability. The final child to be created by Bird and Ikon was Daydream. Daydream would guide the new lives to create, to think, to make decisions, to disagree and fight and love all in a new way, to be individuals. And Daydream thrived in this new world. And so the stage was set. And on a blue and green planet, far, far away, a creature stood on its hind legs to reach for fruit and began to dream. Enter the Paracosm is a Euphrasy Studio production. It is written and narrated by me, Finch. The Lo-Fi Beats music used throughout the episode is created by producer Riddyman on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch you all next week.